screws to a chore like a morning commute. But if you don't keep your eyes open, it can also turn out to be a nightmare. All aboard! This story could happen today or 50 years ago. A businessman returning from a long out-of-town conference boards a train for the long ride home. All clear! He quickly finds his sleeper compartment and settles down for the overnight journey. Once he's unpacked, he gets out of his clothes and tries to get comfortable. But he can't relax. He's just too stressed out. Sleep is impossible. So while staying in his comfy robe, he heads down to the club car. He figures knocking back a few drinks might help. When he arrives, an attractive young lady is there, and she's got her eye on him. Though he is married, he starts up a little small talk, and she offers him a drink. Happily, perhaps too happily, he accepts. A few rounds later, our businessman's judgment is not in top form. So when the young woman suggests they have a nightcap in her compartment, he accepts. Figuring he won't get caught, he follows her back to her sleeping car. The legend doesn't say what happens that night, though you can take a good guess. But the next morning, our businessman finds himself waking up alone. No sign of his pretty partner. He quickly realizes that he's completely naked under the sheets. His bathrobe is gone. More importantly, so is his wallet. He's so hungover, he can't remember a thing that happened the previous night. He grabs a blanket to cover himself, and it's then that the train comes to a stop. Looking out the window, he's stunned to discover that he's not in his hometown, but in another city hundreds of miles away. Not only was he robbed, but the car he fell asleep in decoupled from the part of the train headed for his hometown and instead took another track leaving him stranded in a strange city, unable even to leave the compartment for help. Back home, his wife wonders why he hasn't shown up at the station. And our businessman wonders how he's going to explain the way he ended up naked and penniless on the wrong train. An embarrassing story, but is it true or a tall tale? Alternative versions of the story say that only the businessman's shoes were rooted on the wrong train after he left them out to be shined overnight. But that's not much fun. Written accounts of this story go back to at least 1971. But the setting for the tale suggests it's far older. Most likely born in the days before World War II, when commuting by train was as common as air travel is today. Of course, private eyes on the lookout for cheating spouses also go back to those days. And from their hard-boiled perspective, the train legend sounds true. I've heard the story. Certainly, I can't think of any reason why it wouldn't be possible. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm reasonably sure that it probably has happened in some context somewhere. I've seen a little bit of everything from uh, what I, I dub flirting with intent all the way up to full-blown lifestyle differences where someone will have a, a steady long-term relationship in multiple cities, multiple states. But a successful cheater goes against our sense of justice. So the urban legend addresses this by giving the wayward husband his comeuppance in a wonderfully embarrassing way. And this, of course, makes the truth of the tale suspect. On the other hand, Resourceful young ladies with good looks and a craving for cash have certainly been known to pounce on an opportunity. Conniving devious women on trains, far-fetched, maybe. Possible, certainly. Anyone traveling puts themselves at risk for those who would take advantage. Indeed, a favorite scam of prostitutes on the Vegas Strip is the old trick and roll. You bring a customer up to a room and while he's in the shower, make off with his wallet and his clothes. The legend traffics in the satisfaction we get in seeing one cheater 
cheated by another. It's part of the appeal of another famous urban legend, wherein a traveling businessman checks into a hotel with a prostitute and wakes up in a bathtub full of ice with his kidney missing. Cheaters never prosper. And the fact is, illicit rendezvous did happen in the grand days of train travel. So says a man who was there. Monkey business can be described in many different ways. But uh, let's talk about secretaries. If you want to make a trip to San Francisco overnight with the fine dining and the good drinks, you'd naturally want your secretary to keep a note on what's going to happen. Southern Pacific knew exactly what they had on the night trains. They knew, and they, they cultivated it because there was uh, a big business in this. But the legend rests on a different sort of coupling the kind trains do when a car detaches from one train and connects with an engine of another. That kind of hitching up also goes on today. You have your couplers uh, that join the cars together. And uh, by raising the pin and separating the cars, you have your air brakes between the cars. And uh, you have to close that off. And uh, then you separate your cars. So waking up to find yourself on a different choo-choo in a different city is possible. At least, it is if there's nobody around to check on you. But in reality, there are human safeguards against ending up on the wrong track. Trains are handled out of the dispatcher's office in Los Angeles. The movement of the train was under strict book of rules, established movement, so that nobody could get lost you got on the wrong train or what. You'd know just exactly where you're at. You have people that would make sure that no accidents happen. Still, there are those who wonder if the legend isn't true. With regard to the woman on the train, it could be a story concocted to uh, keep somebody's fat out of the fire. But in order to determine that, you have to know what really happened. Maybe it's not so far-fetched. In the end, even though every detail of the legend is possible, nobody has tracked down a case of a decoupled compartment caper. In this story, our traveler cooks his own goose. But the woman in our next legend cooks a lot more than that. True or false, Big Ben is the name of the famous clock in the tower of the British Parliament. The answer, 